Hey guys, Zell here, and welcome back to some more Goddess of Victory Nikkei. Now, in terms of the, uh, the poll for the favorite characters, Madonia is winning by over 100,000, 104,000 over Scarlet, and in third place, it's our girl Alice. And let's just say this, last time I saw it, Drake is literally no longer in the uh, top nine. I think she's 10th place currently, which means sadly, everyone's favorite villain has dropped in the rankings. And that sucks. But either way, since you know Alice is top three, let's do Alice next. Why not? Episode one, a book to Elysia. The story begins on a day not too long ago. Alice lived in a place where it was always snowed heavily. Had always snowed heavily. Together with the warm-hearted Snow Queen, Alice fought relentlessly against the minions of the Heart Queen. For the sake of a happy world. It was but an ordinary day filled with normal events. Alice had found a book from the Ark a distant place. The Ark, a true Elysium. Elysium? Alice became curious about Elysium and searched the dictionary. Elysium, a place without suffering and pain. A happy place. Alice thought to herself, if the Ark was really an Elysium, wouldn't a happy world exist in there? My queen, is the Ark really an Elysium? Why do you ask all of a sudden? It says in this book that the Ark is an Elysium. Hmm, I thought I saw some strange books getting delivered. It appears a shipment meant for the Ark library came to us by mistake. Well... The Ark is a kind of Elysium. What makes an Elysium is different depending on the person. But it is true, some call it that. Then the Ark really is Elysium. Alice was delighted. She started to think. Maybe the Heart Queen would not have to be defeated in order to find a happy world. With this thought in mind. Alice decided to ask one more time. Hey, Rabbity! Is your really Elysium? Rabbity looks a little surprised by the question before answering. Yes. As expected, the Queen also said the same. It seems your really is Elysium. So can we find a happy world there? Not quite. Why? You may not be happy. Hmm? It's somewhat difficult. <laughs> Inside her head, Alice became more confused. Alice, if you are that curious, you should go and see for yourself. You have never seen the Ark properly. Servant, will that be okay? Do you want to see the Ark? I do, but... May I go? There is no reason you can't. However... But Alice was worried. As a queen, you shouldn't be alone. You don't know how to operate the machines. And you can't touch the fairy maid. Or the fairy maid will have to work without any breaks. If that's the case, we can give her a special bonus. You always forget where you store your favorite tea. You also drop the teacup once or twice every day. That's... No matter how much I think about it, staying by yourself is too dangerous. That's true. Servant, even you. But aren't you curious if the Ark really is Elysium? Well, kind of. Then let's go to the Ark. Hmm, let's go. Go and see it with your own eyes. 
If that place is really Elysium. If a happy world exists there. Go with Rappity. Go with Rabbity, who will help take you to a happy world. After seeing the queen support, Alice was determined to do so. Yes, I will go. And so Alice followed Rabbity to the Ark in search of a happy world. Alice arrives at the Ark with Rabbity. The Ark is full of wondrous things. Everywhere is sparkling. Everyone is smiling. This place, it's Elysium. It really looks like Elysium. Wait here for a moment. Gravity brings a bundle of clouds and holds it out to Alice. What's this? This is cotton candy. You can even make candy from cotton. No, it's actually made of clouds. Cloud? The more she looks around Elysium, the more fascinating the place becomes. Wow, it's like holding a cloud in your hands. That's right. Alice takes a little bite of the cotton candy. Rabbity, the cloud disappeared in my mouth. Alice's eyes shine with delight. There are so many fascinating things here at Elysium. It really is Elysium. This is just the beginning. Rabbity speaks with confidence. I will show you more fascinating things. Alice follows Rabbity to a place called Cafe. Uh, isn't it called Cafe Sweetie? Rabbity buys Alice a coffee with a mountain of cream on top. Wow, the cream is floating on the coffee. It looks like snow piled up. Uh, snow. This brings up the thought of the snow queen. As Alice stands up and looks around at her surroundings. However, the queen is nowhere to be seen. What is it? Maybe the queen is here. Isn't this something that only the Snow Queen can make? No, this was made by the Cream Queen. <laughs> Cream Queen? There are so many cool people in Elysium. After drinking the coffee, Rabbity and Alice visit the Land of Books. Wow, there's so many books. It is a fascinating place full of books wherever you look. In this place, there are many books that Alice likes. Do you like books? Yes, I do. Because books contain happy worlds. What's your favorite book? Hmm. Alice looks around the bookshelf full of children's books. There are so many that I can't choose. Hey, Rabbity, can you pick one for me? There can only be one right choice for you, Alice, here. Rabbity picks the book Alice in Wonderland. Huh. Don't you like it? No. I like this book. Weird. Why didn't I think of this a moment ago? I used to read this book every day. Because I really liked it. Just reading this book made me happy. Then let's get this. What? It's a gift. Rabbity hands over the book to Alice. A gift? For me? Don't you like it? No, I like it. I love it. Alice is overjoyed. An ideal world that she had only dreamed of. She feels she is in that very world now. Time flies and soon they have to leave Elysium. Before heading to Rabbity's house, they decide to take a little break. Was your trip to Elysium fun? Yes, it was so much fun. Alice looks up, gazing at the sky above her. The sky in Elysium is glistening just as it was before. How was it? 
How was it? Did it seem like Elysium? Yes. It really seems like Elysium. That's a relief. Being here makes me really happy. Stop. Polly? In the distance, a person in a blue uniform is chasing someone. With one chasing another. They look like they're playing hide and seek. Wow, it looks like they're playing hide and seek. Move aside. Oh, ah. The person giving chase trips over a rock and falls. Oh, that hurts. Huh? He's going to run away. Wait, I'll chase him and bring him back. What? Rabbity runs after the person. Rabbity is busy here too. Alice being left alone decides to wait for Rabbity. At that moment, someone speaks to Alice. Hey miss, are you alone? Who are you? I'm just someone selling candy. Oh no. I sell the most delicious candy in the street. The most delicious candy? That's so cool. Some people say tasting my delicious candy brings them happiness. Happiness? How about it? Do you want to try? Uh, I had to wait here for Rabbity. It won't take long. It's not far from here. Hmm. After hearing that, Alice is conflicted. She went, wanted to gift something to Rabbity, who bought her a book that she likes. Would I be able to gift that? Yes, of course. Come along now. We can talk as we walk. The way there is a bit complicated, so follow me closely, in case you get lost. I'll keep up. And just like that, Alice follows the candy man away. Alice, why? You don't follow strange men who say they'll give you candy. Alice follows the candy man walking along a winding road. It's surrounded by the dark night. Unlike the twinkling streets. It's very dark here. And the road is like a maze. It's okay. If you lose sight of me, just follow these children. Alice is not the only one walking down the road. There is a girl with a pink dress. A girl with double ponytails. A girl with a blue headband. And a girl with red shoes. We're all walking, we're all walking together. Well, we've revived everyone. Can everyone please stand in a line? I will give out the candy that brings happiness. Now, technically speaking, the candy he's talking about is probably a drug. Not what I initially thought he was going to do. Alice joins the line in excitement. Don't start eating just because you got it first. We all eat together. The line becomes shorter and shorter. And now Alice's turn. Here you go, miss. The candy man hands the candy to Alice. Can this be gift wrapped? Ah, uh, we can do that another time. Now why don't you try it? Don't worry about the money. This is on me. Free, how do you like that? Uh, that's... Okay, next. Alice stares blankly at the candy. The queen said not to eat anything from strangers. Exactly. Well, it looks like everyone has one. On the count of three, we all eat it at the same time. One. Two. Three. Go. The girl in the pink dress falls asleep. 
The girl with the double ponytails falls asleep. The girl with the blue hairband falls asleep. The girl with the red shoes falls asleep. Alice is shocked by what she sees and asks. Hey miss, you didn't eat it. Are they all sleeping? B because the candy was so delicious. They said they wanted to nap a bit before leaving. Well, it must be delicious. Of course. Once you eat it, you'll, you will never forget the taste. Now then, you should also eat it. Uh, that's... Alice wonders if she should eat the candy. At that moment, she remembers what happened in the morning. When she visited the cafe with Rabbity. Here's the coffee that you ordered. Here, a cookie on the house. Please enjoy. After the friendly waitress served the coffee and left, Alice stared at the cookie and asked, Rabbity, the queen said not to eat anything from strangers. But this is a complimentary treat. Can I eat it? Yet courtesy should be returned with gratitude. Don't eat it. You should be wary of anything given to you by a stranger. Okay, look. This one makes sense in the current situation as she's inside of an actual restaurant. Cafe. Technically, you should. But don't eat it. You should be wary of anything given to you by a stranger. Don't eat it. Even though it's a complimentary treat. Recalling what Rabbity said, Alice makes a decision. What are you worrying about? This is a complimentary treat on the house. Miss, you came here because you wanted to eat this candy. No, I'm not going to eat it. Are you sure you're not going to eat it? Yes, Rabbity said not to eat it. Really? The candy man lifts a wooden stick and strikes Alice on the head. Idiot, she's a Nikkei. That's not going to do anything. Huh. It hurts. But what? Why aren't you passing out? Huh. Huh. Oh, this is a game played in Elysium. You hit someone's head. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Let's play together. Yes, bust some heads, Alice. Wanting to play, too. Alice raises her head. Nikkei's cannot harm people. Uh, I'm not trying to cause any harm. What are you doing surprising me like that? The candy man once again strikes Alice on the head. Nikkei cannot harm people. I'm not causing harm. It's a game. What is this? Why aren't you passing out? Nikkei cannot harm people. Uh -huh. Sorry, I can't hit you. Can we play another game? Alice wants to tell the candy man that she can't hit people because she is an EK. But she can't tell him because he is an ordinary human being. This is the rule that an EK needs to follow when entering Elysium. Ah. Ah, not working. The candy man once again strikes Alice on the head. Alice falls to the ground. The candy man continues to strike Alice multiple times. Stop! Let go of this! What if you damage her brain? Once her eyes were closed, she could remember what Rabbity had said. How was it? Did it seem like Elysium? Weirdly, the Ark no longer seemed like Elysium. A poor girl Alice has had her head beaten so many times that she literally passed out. Vital signs have been restored. Ha! Huh. Managed to weather the storm. Next time, your heart won't be able to enjoy it. Before that, we need, we'll need to extract the brain. Poor kid. That was the contract agreed on from the start. If not, who would take a quotidian's child? Mister, it's time for the surgery. Right. Teacher? Yes. The outside world is a happy place, right? 
Having the surgery is like being born again. So that means... I can be happy there too, right? Yes, of course. You'll be happy. Thank you. Let's go. I think we can go now. Mister. If you are born again, what kind of person do you want to be? The girl stares blankly over the bed. On the bed, her favorite books are spread out. Alice. I want to be Alice. In the back alley, the sound of police sirens echoes. Four victims have all been rescued. All perpetrators are apprehended. You've done well. Commander, is that kid okay? Yeah, she should be fine. He should have left the kid alone after finding out she wasn't a normal kid. Even if he was greedy for a body of an Ike, breaking a leg. Good thing he was dawdling around to be caught. If the commander hadn't seen the signal from the kid, she would have been in deep trouble. Thank goodness. Commander, I think it might be too much for you to carry the kid alone. May I assist you? No need, I've con already contacted Mustang. Is that right? Then he will be here any moment. Uh. Oh, I think she's waking up now. In that case, we'll go back now. We'll see you again, Commander. Thanks, you too. Polly and Miranda leave. Alice. Uh, Rabbity. Did you sleep well? Uh-huh. Rabbity. Good morning. Did you have a nice dream? Um, no. I think I dreamt about something. I feel like it might have been a sad dream. Or it might have been a happy dream. I can't remember it that well. You don't have to remember it. Rabbity, did you come for me? That's right, I saw the sign you sent. Uh-huh, Rabbity. I'm happy you came for me. And the princesses. All right. There are many sleeping princesses here, too. We have to wake them up. The police have already woken them up and taken them to safety. Already? Well, they rescued all the princesses. We're saved. Uh-huh, Rabbity. You're like a fairy tale hero. Is that so? Hmm, mm-hmm. What's wrong? I it's weird. I don't want you to be like a hero. I wish you could always just be Rabbity. Why is that? Because heroes keep surging ahead without looking back. When I'm unhappy, Rabbity is the only one who can. Take me to the land of happiness. Rabbity, I've been thinking. Without you, Rabbity, this place doesn't seem like Elysium. I thought about why, and I think now I understand. The Ark is not Elysium, but you, Rabbity, are my Elysium. That's why. From now on, instead of being a hero, can you be my Rabbity? I will do that. Can you always come for me? Like today. I will always come for you. Alice reaches out for a warm embrace. Uh -huh. I like you, Rabbity. I really like you. Let's go home. Yes, I will go anywhere. When we're together. After being through so much, they leave. Alice visits the hospital near Rabbity's house. At the hospital, the boss gets angry while fixing Alice's leg. You followed a stranger because you wanted to get some bonbons? Yeah, I was told it was the most delicious candy there. Oh, no! One of your positive qualities is how pure and magnifique your mind is. 
But this was very dangerous. Mademoiselle needs to be very careful with her body. If you still do not care for your body in the future, I won't let you meet Commandant Rabbity. Do you understand, Known? Yes. Over a phone call, the Queen is furious. Alice, I've told you so many times. Do not look at or speak to any strangers. Uh, but, my Queen, I didn't know anyone there and they were all strangers. Does that mean I can't look at anyone at all? That's not what I mean. I'm talking about strangers who approach and talk to you. <sighs> when you come back, you will be writing a letter of apology. I understand. Nevertheless, I'm glad you're safe. Come back safely. Yes, my queen. Even though Alice got into a lot of trouble, she becomes a little happier. She feels warmth and concern from the queen. And she was able to spend all those moments with Rabbity. After a hectic day, the night has come again. While holding on to the book gifted by Rabbity Alice, lies on the bed. Did you have a fun trip? Yes, Rabbity. I liked eating the cotton candy. I liked drinking the coffee made by the Queen Queen. I liked going to the land of books and getting a present there. And also, uh huh, although I went to the hospital because of the candy man, I still thought it was fun. I'm glad to hear that. Um, Rabbity, I have a favor to ask. What is it? Can you hold my hand? Your hand? To be honest, I don't think I like being in a hospital. I'm not sure why, but I think it's because I've been here for a long time. And I feel scared being alone here. Rabbity holds Alice's hand. Do you feel better? Uh -huh, yes. As soon as Rabbity held Alice's hand, surprisingly Alice stopped feeling scared. Her mind became relaxed and she felt sleepy. Oh, oh. Uh -huh, I'm sleepy now. You can sleep. Rabbity, can you hold my hand until I fall asleep? If Abity keeps me company, I think I will have the sweetest dreams. I will do that. Uh-huh, I like you, Abity. I really, really like you. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams to Abity. Alice falls asleep while holding Abity's hand. In the dream, Alice finds herself in a white prison. As always. The line of green light dancing on her heart starts to dictate her time. She hears hurtful words from the people in white from head to toe. But she is not afraid as before. That's because Rabbity came to her and held her hand. Let's go home. Alice steps out of the white prison to find a happy world. Together they walk. Towards Elysium. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> that was the shortest one so far, but my god, did that have an impact. So, obviously, uh, her walking towards Elysium, was that her essentially the human side of her dying? Essentially? And she went towards Elysium with her rabbity. And now she essentially lives on as a Nike. Because holy crap, I did not see her story going that far. <laughs> but yeah, again, I, I like Alice. She's nice. I mean, I had a lot more fun doing her, you know, my terrible voices for her story than 
the others. <laughs> Mainly because it was kind of easier for me to do. And it was shorter as well, so <laughs> that's a bonus. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's really sad if what I just saw what is actually what I'm thinking. Oh boy. But yeah, that was Alice's story. Fun times. Again. Now, could it could it be that people who actually have seen her Bond story are the ones voting for her? And that's why she's third place? Or is it the people that actually really like using her in a party? And that's why she is. Or both. Probably both. Eh. Honestly, after seeing this, I think that, you know, she deserves second place, if anything. Then Scarlet, just saying, I literally think that she deserves second place. In most cases, in terms of her story, if what I just saw was actually what I think it is, I honestly think she deserves first place. But here's the thing in terms of the voting poll. Like, her outfit right now is a bodysuit that keeps her body cooled because she her body without it just gives off excess heat. So she needs the suit to cool herself down, if I remember correctly. So even if she did get an outfit, what exactly could they do? Because, canonically speaking, she would give off way too much heat without the outfit. I mean, I guess they could put cooling sh stuff in her- in a different outfit? But currently speaking, like, um... Alice literally is too hot to handle if she doesn't have the outfit on. But yeah, either way, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Which will, well, I mean, in terms of, like, the voting, I'm not going to be able to do Rapunzel, because I sadly don't have her. Uh, who else in the poll can I do? I need to open it up. Okay, so. Anis is fifth. So technically, Anis would be next. But here's the thing about Anis. I kind of w prefer Rappi over Ani, so if anything, I'm going to do Rappi before Ani. So at that point, it would be Rappi, Ani, the Neon, in that order. But in terms of, like, doing these, I don't have Snow White either, or Viper. So... I could do Rita's story. Eh... I might do Vapias because she's always intrigued me. And she's currently the only one out of our counter squad that, you know, is maxed out at 10 for the story. So, yeah. Poor Drake, man. Ra Even Rappi is beating Drake. Like, Anius and Rappi, I'm surprised that they're actually beating Drake. Because, I mean, she's a cool character, but then again, uh, I, I like Rappi because she's part of the main story all the time. And her story is interesting, and her special power as well. That might get unlocked in the future. Hmm. I wonder. And she might jump up here. But yeah, then we also have Rupi, Soda, Helm, Pravati, Sakura, Laplace, Senti. Why are people voting for Nihilister? Look, I know Nihilister's hot and all, but don't you still need to wait like three to five months? Four? Unless she's using a bunch of gems every single time to make sure you get 30 points every time. You still won't get her for quite a while. So why the heck would you want an outfit for her? What would they even do? Put her in literally a thong? Like, she's already showing a lot. You want to show less? 
Let's be honest, I'd love to see that as well, but yeah. Either way, like, yeah, even, even, wow. How is Nihilista beating Hodon, man? Come on, Hodon's great. I guess nothing beats as everyone calls her Dragon Mommy. Now, I've already done this for, like, voting for your favorite character costume. I went with Helm. It's between Dollar and Helm, obviously, but I still went with Helm. Hers was the first outfit I was like, wow, oh my god, I absolutely need it. Is she even wearing anything? Like, come on. It just hits different with her outfit compared to everyone else's. I mean, everyone else's are nice and all, but... I'm still kind of uh, sad that I actually got this one. Kind of. I don't use Emma anywhere near as much as I used to. Especially after now getting Scarlet, I don't really need to put her in. Uh, Noise is still doing wonders for healing. So yeah, either way, I voted for Helm's outfit. Nero, I voted for Nero last time. Hmm. What I don't want them to do, though, like, if the favorite character costume that we like gets chosen, I hope they then don't make Madonia's outfit similar to Helm's. Like, I want a completely different outfit that still shows a lot, but it's actually nice to look at and makes me want to buy it, like... Helm. Then again, it's gonna be a free outfit, so... I think they'd put the more, you know, risque outfits up for price, and a free outfit, not so much. Because which one was a free outfit? Where's Rappi's outfit? Like, this one's literally just Rappi's outfit, but white and blue. This was a free outfit. This is a free outfit. Like, yeah. I don't know. Either way, back to the game. And yeah, I will see you guys later. Where it'll probably be another girl's bond. Probably. And if it's not... I don't know what else it would be. Because let's just say this. Before doing this, I fought Nihilister again. We literally got her down to 15 life bars, almost 14. I am so close to being able to finally beat her and actually be able to show the rest of the story for chapter 20. And by the rest, I mean all of it. Because... I'm literally being cucked myself by not being able to see the finale to it. It's really irritating me. Now, tomorrow is Blacksmith. I hope by the grace of the gotcha gods that I manage to get a custom module or else I will lose my mind. What'll make me lose it even more though is when the double loot happens for Chatterbox and Madonia, if I don't get a custom module from double loot at, on both of them, then I will literally scream. Because then it's literally the game saying, F you, you're not getting shit at all, and you will never get a freaking Overloaded piece of gear. So yeah. All I want though is to be able to be Nihilister before the new chapter part chapters come out. Cause if the new chapters come out and they actually lower the difficulty like they have been when other chapters come out, then that means a Nihilista would automatically then be weaker than our team if they actually do in fact lower the difficulty for her. And then at that point, just cheapens the victory. 
I worked so hard for what? For them to change her difficulty before I could win. At that point, I might as well have just cheesed her. Which I never would do, but still. That would suck. See ya. Either way, till then, I will see you guys later.